Hey guys, Matt here. I'm currently a medical student at the University of Sydney and in today's video, we're gonna be going through some of the important information that sometimes gets missed out on when applying to medical schools. Keep in mind, this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. In the bottom left-hand corner, you'll find timestamps to every section, so you can always skip around. They'll also be in the description, along with links to any information that we have used, so you can always double-check that stuff yourself. Let's jump right into it. All right, couple things to start us off. First of all, 30th of September 2020, that is the due date for most of the medical application related stuff, so keep that in mind. Second of all, if you have your heart set on medicine, you should be applying to as many medical schools as possible because any reservations you might have about a particular school is a bridge that you can cross if you get an offer from them and there's no point in closing any doors right now. Thirdly, I want to preface this by saying I'm not affiliated with this organization in any way but Study Work Grow made a great resource that I used personally when I was applying to medical school called Entry into Medicine 2020. Now it's updated to 2021 and it's in the description down below. Essentially, it contains all the information about medical schools across Australia. You can also find it by simply Googling Study Work Grow Entry into Medicine 2021 PDF and that should be your first search result. So in terms of applying to individual schools, I'm sure you're already aware that each state has its own tertiary admission center in New South Wales case, it's the UAC, and you get a certain amount of preferences in which you can order in any way you like for the courses that you choose. The most important thing to remember about this process is that for every single round, round as in when universities send out offers, for every single round, you can only receive one offer. In other words, the highest preference that you qualify for is the only course that you will receive an offer for in that first particular round or whatever round it is. And whilst there are multiple offer rounds, these are much less likely to be successful because A, a lot of medical schools don't even participate in later rounds and B, the ones that do often have much less offers to give out because these are from offers that likely were not accepted in earlier rounds. Just keep in mind that if you are using QTAC, they do charge a fee after the third time that you change your preference. Now for different universities, in terms of what you need to do in the actual admission center, it's pretty straightforward and standardized. However, some universities have their own applications and external forms that you need to fill in. Here are some common examples. UNSW has a medical admissions portal with a series of questions you need to answer that could potentially be brought up in the actual interview. You have JCU or James Cook University with a written application that you need to email or post in. You have JMP, which has an online application. And finally, you have Curtin University, where there is an estimated ATAR form that you would potentially need to get from your school administration. All of the links to those are down below in the description, so feel free to scroll there if you need any of them. If you're trying to increase your chances of getting into medical school, applying interstate is a logical decision. A very useful tip is to have a centralized document where you have all your personal information as well as brief summaries about your academic and extracurriculars so that you can speed up the process as you're applying to every single university on your list. Now, there's a couple things to remember. First of all, use up all your preferences because it doesn't cost you any extra money. However, it opens up more pathways for you to potentially consider in the future. Secondly, there's a lot of states to keep track of, so don't forget to pay your application fees for each individual state because otherwise your preferences will not go through and you cannot receive offers. Lastly, VTAC has a personal statement, kind of like a CV. Essentially, you write down your academic achievements, your extracurricular, as well as your community service. And it's not something that every university takes into account, but some medical schools do. So definitely check whether the medical school that you're applying to does look at that. One more thing, UAC, VTAC, QTAC, SATAC, and TISC all seem to have a closing date of 30th of September, but of course, always double check this for yourself. So the most important part of applying to medicine is knowing your plan B if it doesn't work out. So there are three main pathways. The first one is the GAMSAT pathway that essentially involves you doing an undergraduate degree, getting a GPA, and then doing a GAMSAT, which is a five hour aptitude test, and combining the two, you then apply for postgraduate medicine degrees. A common question that gets asked in the context of this alternate pathway is what undergraduate degree should I pick as my backup to put in my extra preferences or extra slots inside my preferences? And the quick answer to that is to pick a degree that you'll be comfortable pursuing a career in and continuing aside from medicine. And the reason for that is because there's a common misconception that doing a medical related undergraduate degree such as medical science will give you a better chance at getting into a postgraduate medical degree, which is simply just not true. You should only be going into something like medical science if you truly do enjoy it and can see yourself pursuing a career in that particular field. 
And another important thing to consider is that once you start a tertiary degree, there will be a number of medical schools such as UQ and Monash that will no longer allow you to apply to their undergraduate medical courses. However, there are some universities that allow something called a non-standard entry, and that is our second pathway that we're going to discuss. So an example is JMP, which allows you to apply to their undergraduate medical program, even if you've already started tertiary studies somewhere else. Similarly, WSU allows you to apply to their undergraduate medical program if you aren't going to finish your degree at the end of the year that you're applying. So all of the information is down in the description below. There are links to these websites. So the third alternate pathway is what we call a gap year. Essentially, you put off university for a year and you spend that year of free time on anything you like. Most people choose to improve their UCAT or potentially improve their interview skills and then reapply the following year. And in that way, they're still eligible for most of the undergraduate programs and they can use their ATAR and UCAT in the same way that a high school leaver could. So once you're done applying to medical schools, don't forget to apply to scholarships that could potentially be available to you. Because anecdotally, at least, there's a lot of money every year that doesn't get given out because people just don't think to apply. Some scholarships will not require any action on your part because UAC will automatically send your marks to the university and then the university will decide whether they want to give you a scholarship or not. However, some scholarships do require a lengthy application process on your part where you have to submit information about your academics and your extracurriculars. And here's an example. So this is the UNSW General Merit Undergraduate Scholarships for High School Leavers. And you can see here that there is a selection criteria in which you'll be assessed based on school and community leadership roles as well as commitment to extracurricular activities. And that is relevant supporting documentation that you need to submit. Again, you want to use a centralized document where all your information is in one place so you can apply to multiple scholarships really quickly. The information for individual scholarships can be found on their respective university websites. And these university websites are actually linked inside the study work grow document that I was talking about earlier in this video. And that can be found in the description below. And so just spend 20 minutes going through all the universities and applying to the scholarships you're eligible for, because you never know that you could potentially be awarded one. All right, that wraps it up for the video. Mojo here, and I wish you the best of luck for your applications. If you have any further questions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the content or found anything useful, please like the video as it really helps us grow the channel. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, at least here it is, good night.